Top of the top, y'all, it's your boy Show tapping in real quick. Today, I'm just gonna go through five steps and help you guys understand the correct way to follow up with leads, all right? And you can really use this in any industry, not just real estate. You can do this if you're selling insurance, if you're a financial advisor, whatever the case may be, all right? The money is in the follow-ups. Very seldomly do we lock up deals on that first call or that first interaction. I'm willing to say that 99% of the business that we do, of the deals that we actually get under contract and close come from follow-ups. Now that may take two follow-up calls. It may take five. It may take 10. All right. You never know. You just have to continuously and consistently follow up with that lead until the right time comes. And we call that staying in front of the lead. All right. You never know when things are going to change, when their situation may change. They may go from not interested right now to I need this done tomorrow. All right. You never know. So you always want to stay in front of them with those touch-ups. All right. Whether that's a call, text message, voicemail, whatever the case may be. But if you get them on the call, I'm going to go through five steps today that's going to help you guys, you know, convert those leads. All right. You have to know the correct way to follow up. That's where the money is. Let's go. Step one, you want to greet them correctly. All right. And so I'm just going to go through a really quick, really simple example. Ring, ring. Hello. Could I speak to James? Yes, this is James. Hey, how's it going, James? How are you doing today? I'm doing fine or whatever their response is. After that, immediately introduce yourself. Okay, James, this is Andrew. And then what you want to do is remind them why you're calling. Hi, James, this is Andrew. Uh, we spoke a couple weeks ago regarding your property over at 123 Main Street, and I just want to follow up on that conversation. Boom. So you, sh you guys should take three things from that. One, I address them by name. I asked them how they were doing. I introduced myself. And then I let them know why I was calling, all right? That's very crucial, guys, in the first couple seconds of that phone call because you have to catch their attention, all right? You have to draw them in. And so that's a quick way to do that, all right? Let's go to step two. Number two, and do not disregard this. This is very, very important, guys, all right? What you want to do after you introduce yourself and greet them, you want to say, it's now a bad time. You don't want to ask them if it's a good time, all right? You want to give them, because obviously you want them to say, no, it's not a bad time. We can talk, right? Because you want to have a conversation to get deeper into the reason why you're calling. So when you ask them, is it a bad time? Majority of the time, they're going to say, no, it's not a bad time. And when people can tell you no, that gives them control of the conversation or at least makes them feel like they're in control of the conversation, all right? So I always ask right after my introduction, it's now a bad time? And they say, no, I can talk. Perfect. When they give you that, when they say no, like I said, it empowers them and feel like they're in control of the conversation, even though you're about to take that control back. That's not what matters. All right. So you want to ask them after that greeting, it's now a bad time to talk and let them answer you and go from there, guys. But give that um, seller or that person on the other end of the phone, try to give them control or make them feel like they're in control because that's going to make for a better conversation. I guarantee you. Let's keep going. Step three. So since this is a follow-up, meaning you've already talked to them previously, what you want to do after you confirm that it's a good time for you guys to talk, you want to reiterate your last conversation in detail, all right? So you greeted them, you've made sure that it's a good time for you guys to talk, and then you want to immediately go into why you're really calling, right? So I might say, hey, James, um, I know last time we talked, you told me that uh, your mom hadn't made up her mind about selling a property or your sister and brothers hadn't made up their mind about selling a property yet. You guys wanted a little more time to uh, think on it. You told me to give you about three weeks. And so I'm just circling back to see if anything's changed. Have you guys made a decision to move forward? All right. So what I do is I just throw out the exact last conversation we had to remind them because they probably get so many calls from other people soliciting to buy their property or to, you know, give them services that they may not remember you. All right. Especially if they don't have your number saved or like I said, they get a lot of calls. So you want to remind them that we did actually have a full conversation. You did talk to me and this is what you said. And when you remind them of the conversation y'all had, men are even more open to talking to you and they're going to start giving you feedback immediately because they know, okay, I did actually talk to this person 
And, um, you know, they were paying attention to what I told them my setback or my situation was. So let me give them a little more information. All right. So that's going to be very key, guys. You want to take notes from every call you have. So on that next follow up, you can reiterate that conversation and say exactly to them what they said to you. And that's going to pull them closer, guys. Now, let's go to step four. Step four, what you want to do is try to find anything within the conversation, either that you're having currently or from the last conversation to build some relationships report on, all right? Try to connect with them. You understand what I'm saying? Try to make them feel like you know exactly what they're going through or you've been in their position or whatever. Anything that you can, you know, spark up a conversation with that draws a connection, all right? So just going off the examples that I went off of, um, hey, James, so I know you said uh, you wanted to speak with your family, your mother, your siblings about the property. Do they live here in Dallas or are they out of town? You might say, um, well, yeah, they are here in Dallas. They live in Irving. And then I'll say something like, yeah, man, I love Irving. I used to live out there uh, in the Los Colinas area. What what part of uh, Irving do they live in? Uh, you know, or I might say, yeah, man, Irving's a great place. Uh, I can't believe they took the Cowboy Stadium from there and moved it all the way to Arlington. You know, anything to just keep going on that conversation based on something that they've mentioned. So something that's not about the property, not about the reason you're calling, you're just trying to build a connection. And this can be a simple connection, guys. I mean, anything that you can take from that conversation to spark a completely different conversation, all right, just to make it seem like you care about them and what they have going on and not just the property or soliciting your services, all right? Building rapport is really key and it's easy to do as long as you're listening to the seller and paying attention attention to the conversation. And like I said before, taking good notes, guys. All right. So you want to make sure you are building some type of rapport. You want to make this into a relationship. You want to make them feel like they owe you a conversation or, you know, they owe you an explanation for why you, why they are or are not moving forward. All right. Build a deeper connection, guys. That way it's not just a sales call because nine times out of 10, if people just feel like they're on a sales call, they're going to blow you off. They're not going to be honest with you, you know, and, and they're going to run you around in circles, but we don't want that. So we want to have good communication and we want to try to establish a connection in whatever way that is, guys. So step number four, build rapport. Let's go. Fifth and final step is you want to make sure you establish the next steps in detail. All right. So however your conversation flows, you don't want to get off that phone without knowing what's coming next. All right. So, um, James might say, well, I still haven't talked to my mom or my siblings. So, you know, we're still kind of in the same place. Nothing has changed. Okay, fine. So you want to ask them detailed questions. All right, no problem, James. I completely understand that. I know, you know, everybody's busy. Everybody's got their own thing going on. It might be hard to catch up with people at times, you know. So when can I potentially expect you to speak with your family so I can give you a follow-up call? He might say, oh, well, I don't know. Or, you know, oh, it might be two weeks. Okay, cool. No problem. If he says, I don't know, you want to say, all right, you know, no problem. Like I said, I understand everybody's busy, you know, including you, including me. So I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste your time. You know, with the continuous follow-ups, I want to make sure when I reach out and give you a call, we have something to carry on that conversation. Uh, so would it be okay if I give you a call, let's say in a week? You might say, yeah, a week sounds good. Okay, great. What day works best for you? Tuesday, Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday may be a better day. Um, okay, perfect. How does 10 a.m. sound on Wednesday? Or how does 2 p.m. sound on Wednesday? You know, you want to get them to commit to a time for you guys to talk again, all right? Um, now, if he says, yeah, I did talk to my mom and siblings and they want to establish a time to get together, you know, and maybe meet up with you, you want to go in that same sequence. OK, would the weekends be better? Do they work during the week? You know, you want to ask questions to get to the bottom line. And the bottom line is you need to know exactly when you guys are going to converse again and what that conversation is going to be about. So just like we did today, you can lead off with that as far as the reason you're calling. All right. So when you call them next Wednesday at 2 p.m., they know, okay, whether they pick up the phone or not, man, I had a, a, a 2 p.m. call schedule with this guy, you know, so they might feel like I got to call him back or I got to take this call or I got to let him know what's going on because they made a commitment to you. And if they're good people, some people are, some people are not, then they're going to want to, you know, fulfill their obligation or that commitment to you that they, you know, that they made a promise on. And, you know, sometimes people don't, don't always happen that way. But what you need to do, what your job is, is to still 
establish that time frame. okay? You want to leave that call with another call set up. And when I say a call set up, I mean a date and time and a place if necessary, all right? So there you have it, guys. Those are my five steps as far as the follow-up. And like I said before, the money is in the follow-ups, all right? You have to consistently follow up with people. And when you do that, you want to have key talking points. You want to build rapport and you want to establish a connection, guys. All right. And if you don't get the deal on that call, set up the next call. All right. And keep it going. Now, if it's not worth your time, they're not going to do business with you. It doesn't seem like, you know, they're interested, honestly, you know, then maybe that's a dead lead. But if there's any spark of interest and this could really be a deal for you, stay consistent on the follow-ups, guys. Uh, I mean, we've done a deal after 10, 20 follow-ups. Uh, we've gotten deals, contracts signed after a year of follow-up, after six months of follow-up. You never know what can change in people's lives, guys. So just stay consistent. You can do this business, you know, and you can be successful. Until the next time, man, tap in.